It belongs to you always. Oh, you deserve my worship. Yes, you do, Lord. You deserve my praise. Adoration and glory belongs to you. service here at Holy Cross Mission Baptist Church, Home Edition. As we listen to, um, as we listen to, what's her name, Crystal Rucker, amen. As we listen to Crystal Rucker, let us come into the saints where we're giving God the praise and the glory because he kept us another year. Come on in, ladies and gentlemen, come on in, come on in, come on in. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. See you, ladies and gentlemen. So glad that you can be a part of our service. Thank you for joining. I know it's first Sunday, and we are normally supposed to be inside of the sanctuary, uh, but as you can see outside, it is snowing uh, immensely, and so we decided that we would stay at home today and worship together in peace without snow. All right, so. Um, <clears throat> Happy New Year to you, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year to you. I know you've been hearing it all uh, for the past couple of days, uh, but Happy New Year to you. Um, I pray that the new year is blessed and prosperous for you. It's been a very trying time. I get it. I understand. Uh, but God has kept us alive, kept us safe, kept us covered, kept us provided, kept us protected. Uh, you name it, God has done it for us. So why don't you just take about 15 seconds and give God the best thumbs up, the best hearts up, the best thank you, Jesus, in your comments for what God has done in 2021. Yes, it has been a challenging year. Yes, it has been a trying year. Uh, we've had to deal with so many different unforeseen circumstances, but yet God has still brought us through. I don't know about you, but I think he deserves a thank you. I really do. I really do. I think he deserves a thank you. Listen, it's first Sunday, so grab your your juice, if you will, whatever you have, and your crackers or your bread or whatever you're going to substitute communion with today, since we are not in the sanctuary. And go ahead and grab that and lay that aside so that we get finished preaching, we will have our communion service. And then we will be on our way. 
Amen. Listen, do me a favor real quick. We haven't done this in a little while. Uh, repeat after me. I am God's child. Therefore, I can do what God say I can do. I can have what God say I can have. I can be what God say I can be. I believe his word and I accept his will. Therefore, I am healed, delivered, and set free. I am above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. In Jesus' name, amen. Declare that over yourself in 2022, that this is a season of not only change, it is a season of deliverance. It is a season of great expectation. So if you spoke it over your life, give God a praise once again, wherever you're watching from, at home, on your job, maybe even in your car. Do me a favor also, wherever you're watching from, just type. Just type what, st what city you're in. Just, hey, I'm on the east side. Or, hey, I'm in the D. I'm on the west side. Or if we have some out-of-town people watching, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much. Thank you for your, your likes. Thank you for your shares. I thank all of you for that. Go ahead and hit your share buttons now. Invite your friends to church now. Tell them, hey, they're on now. Come on and be a part of the service, the hybrid virtual service at home. H.C. Holy Cross Missionary Baptist Church located at 6220 Linwood, Detroit, Michigan 4208 where we don't just talk it but we walk it. H.C. We are not just a church. We are a what? Family. LaShawn, good to see you there. Haven't seen you in quite some time. Chanel, good to see you. Uh, William John Dick, good to see you, my man. Kim, Sister Barry, who is that? Is that Cornell Taylor? Am I saying that correct? If I'm not, please forgive me. Uh, Sister Sibby, Sister Tyson, Sister Bernie, Sister Jenkins. So good to see all of you, ladies and gentlemen, um, for joining in with us here. Listen, since we are in a brand new year, I know we didn't have a watch meeting service, uh, but that's, that's okay because... I trust that you still gave God the proper praise. Um, just do me a favor real quick. Just drop in your comments while you're watching. Drop in your comments. Thank you so much for showing, telling me where you are, ladies and gentlemen. I just like to know where people are watching us from time to time. Drop in your comments just one thing that you're grateful for what God has done. You don't have to type, you don't have to type a paragraph or anything like that. I mean, that's up to you, but you don't have to. But just type one thing that God has done for you in 21. I don't care what it is. Whether he healed you, whether he made a financial way out of no way, whether he delivered you from a sickness or an addiction or whatever it could be, just one thing that God has done. I just want us to have just a brief moment of testimony service so that others can can read being alive amen amen healing chanel says healing uh, i'm grateful for life mabel says i'm grateful for life uh being in my right mind amen amen jeanette being in my right mind that is so so precious especially in this season amen health and financial I said blessed with a job amen I said jerome says life my brother jerome how you doing man Miriam says, keeping me in my right mind and life. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Sister Latimer says, for still for, I'm still in the land of the living. Amen. Regina says, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Amen. Amen. So, so grateful for you, for you letting us know. Others do need to know and read in your life what God has done for you. So I think it's important for us to share our testimonies with other people and to let people know that God is in control, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what it looked like, no matter what it sounded like, no matter what it feel like, God is in control. 
Amen. Sister Finley, good to see you today. So happy to see you. To see Sharon, so happy to see you. Claudia Scroggins, so happy to see you. Cynthia, good to see you. Amen. Deborah Hardy, good to see you. All right. Let's 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 pray for a moment before we get into the word. Um, I think God has something rich to tell you today. That's why I say go ahead and share now so that your family and friends can join in and come in and and, 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 and prayerfully hit the like button and the follow button to start following us and liking us uh, so that we can continue to move forward. Before we go into the prayer, I just want to make mention to you, I want to let you know that the annual church meeting is coming up. I can feel it in my spirit that some of y'all are stressing out about it. It's coming up. Just relax, calm down, stay posted because we're going to let you know in the next couple of weeks as to what the date is going to be. All right, so just keep that in your back pocket. We haven't forgotten about it. It's not elusive. It's coming up. Calm down, relax, and let God do what you do. All right? Listen, grab your family, grab your friends, grab your neighbor, whatever. Touch and agree with somebody in the spirit as we go before the throne of grace. Briefly, just to have a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you today. God, we thank you for your for your many blessings. They're too numerous to, to name and to count. It, it's too much that you've done for us. God, that we, we cannot, like the songwriter said, we cannot tell it all. So God, we just say thank you for everything that you've done for us, that you've done through us, that you have done in us. Thank you, Father for restoration. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for life. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing. Thank you for direction. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank you for providing for us in a time and in a land where provisions are scarce. God, as I always say to you in public and private, thank you for keeping me in Goshen. God, we come today with many cares and concerns. God, we thank you that you allowed us to see another year. Here we are, God. We are still in a crisis. It's a new year, but we have the same issues. But God, we know that just as you kept us in 21, we anchor our faith in you, God, that you're going to keep us in 22. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, Psalms 37 teaches us clearly that even in a famine, the righteous will have more than enough. So God, we praise you right now. We pause and we give you glory and honor, recognizing and realizing that you are still Alpha and Omega. You are still Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are still Jehovah Nisi, our banner. You are still Jehovah Shalom, our peace, God. And so we, we come now with a spirit of thanksgiving, a spirit of praise, realizing and recognizing that we serve not only an awesome God, but we serve a God with all power in your hands. Therefore, we decree and we declare that whatever demonic assignment that has been placed on our lives by the enemy, whatever generational curse that has been embedded down through the corridors of our existence, whatever the enemy has tried to come up against us with his plans, his agendas, we break it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke it and we bind it that this year will be a year of jubilee. This year will be a year of absolute anointing and power on our lives. Healing is going forth right now for those that are sick and afflicted, those that are addicted. Deliverance is going forth through the airwaves now. God, I'm asking that you would give complete insight and direction, that you would speak clearly unequivocally to the hearts and to the minds 
of the people that are watching me right now and that will watch me later. God, I pray that you would give them clear direction. Let not their will be done, but let your will be done in every aspect and every iota of their lives. God, I pray that a person that may be watching right now, that may be confused about what they need to do to become more like you. God, I'm asking that you would just completely saturate their heart, their mind, their spirit, their thoughts, their actions, their deeds, and their agenda. Saturate it with your, with your will. In Jesus' name. God, we thank you now that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Holy Spirit, we surrender all to you now that you make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. It is my prayer and my request that the Spirit of the living God will flow through us today, that you would shake us, make us, mold us, change us, and empower us to be more and more like you. God, we want to be better today than we were yesterday. We want to impress you and not impress our friends or our peers. But God, we just want to make you happy. So we ask now, Holy Spirit, that you would flood us Flood us with your anointing. Flood us with your peace. Touch the bereaved families right now, God, that are grieving over the loss of a loved one. God, you know exactly who they are. The Floyds, the Peters, and so many others, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. And we give your name the praise and the glory now and forever. And let every heart say, Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's see where we're going. All right. Romans chapter number six. Romans chapter number six. Romans chapter number six, verse four. chapter number 6 verse 4 give me a thumbs up when you have it ladies and gentlemen Thumbs up when you have it. Thumbs up when you have it. All right. Here's what it says. New Living Translation, of course. The book of Romans, chapter number six, verse four, says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, we now... Now we also may live new lives. The sermonic spotlight is on the B clause of verse number four. Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. Now we also may live new lives. Want to talk from the subject today, a brand new you, a brand new you. Two days ago, two days ago, the world celebrated celebrated New Year's Eve some went to clubs and to parties and popped bottles with models 
Some went to family and friends, family and friend homes and celebrated with your, your family and friends. Some stayed at home, perhaps alone or with just a close niche of people as you watch the, the ball drop and the, the clock turn to 12, 12 a.m. Others, ladies and gentlemen, even went to church. Yeah. Yeah, we went to church and lifted up our hands and gave God the praise and the glory. But I realized that it doesn't matter where you were, whether you was at the club, whether you was at the crib, whether you was at your at, at your house or your family's house or or whether you was at church. Even though they were different environments, even though we were in different scenarios, there's one thing that we all had in common. It doesn't matter where you are doesn't matter where you were. Everybody had one thing in common on New Year's Eve. And that one thing in common is everybody either shouted or text Happy New Year. Doesn't matter if you was in a club. Doesn't matter if you was at the house. Doesn't matter if you was at church in a sanctuary. Doesn't matter if you was in your car. Doesn't matter where it was. When 12 o'clock came, Everybody either shouted Happy New Year or text the same thing. But the harsh reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that even though everybody shouted or text Happy New Year, the harsh reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that for some, it will not be a happy new year. Even though everybody's on the same agenda, everybody's saying the same thing, for some, the uttered words, happy new year, will not become a reality. And that's because there is no miraculous power. There's no magic pixie dust. That we, that we can sprinkle on the words to make them become a reality. There is nothing you can really do. There is nothing you can say that will change or fortify the words Happy New Year. It's a cliche. It's common. But for some, the new year will not bring happiness. Some people woke up the next day with the same, same problems. Some people woke up with the same hangovers. Some people woke up with the same concerns, the same brokenness and the same discontentment, the same misconceptions about life. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, some people even made resolutions, here it is, that they have no intentions on keeping made some New Year's resolutions, resolutions that you have no intentions on keeping because, watch this, if you were really serious about making positive changes in your life, watch this, beloved, you will not wait until New Year to make them. I think I should say it, say it again. If you were serious about change in your life, if you were serious about God doing something in you and through you, you would not wait until a specific calendar date 
for the Holy Spirit to change your lives. Those who are serious about change, look for the opportunity in the now and not in the future. Those who are serious about change in their lives, do not try to schedule a change, but we try to move and operate in a change, in a change in the now. Now, I've discovered, that, ladies and gentlemen, that the reason most people don't find joy and happiness, the reason why most people will shout Happy New Year, but will not discover or experience new happiness and joy in the new year is because they're looking for it in all of the wrong places. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you want me to say that again, God? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll say it again. People are not finding what they're looking for is because you're looking for it in the wrong places. Beloved ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters, my homeboys, my homegirls, and my peeps, I need to tell you today that you cannot find happiness in the bottom of a bottle. You will not find happiness on the other end of a blunt. You won't find happiness if you happen to be watching me today. You will not find happiness after you do that line. You will not find happiness, ladies and gentlemen, in, in your family, in your friends. You won't even find happiness in your sugar. No. I, I, I know you think you can, but, but the reality is that you cannot find happiness in people. You cannot find joy in people. You cannot find joy in happiness. Happiness and joy, first of all, are two different things, but you cannot find joy and or happiness unless it's discovered in Jesus Christ. I know, I know you the pastor, man. You supposed to say stuff like that. I, I get it. You don't know what I go through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what brings me joy. Look, man, when I'm hanging out, it feel good to me. When I'm doing my thing, it feel good to me. When I'm with my bae, it feel good to me. But the reality is that real joy and real happiness can only be discovered and found in Jesus Christ. I recognize and realize that 2021 have been a trying and challenging year for almost all of us. I think I told you on Wednesday night Bible study that the devil did not just do a drive by and shoot up your house. He drove by and shot my house up too. But the good news is that he shot up the crib, but they're survivors. Can I talk to somebody for a few moments? When the devil does a drive-by in your house, the good news is he might mess your house up, your paint and your windows, but your life is always spared. And somebody ought to pause for about one or two seconds and give God the praise and the glory right there. That God kept you alive when the devil wanted to take you out. God kept you alive, covered, and anchored in his blood. But I recognize that 21 has been trying for people. Loved ones have died and, and, and disease has swept the land and, and money has been funny and change have been strange and, and families have been broken and wrecked and destroyed. But, 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 but even through all of this, even through all of the challenges that we've had, where, where people were concerned about jobs and people concerned about their health and, and loved ones, loved one going to the hospital and get sick and you couldn't even go visit them. You couldn't, you couldn't go hold their hand and, and, and be with them while they are making their transitions. You couldn't even, couldn't even, couldn't even go into stores and, and, and get the things that you needed. You, and now you had, to be, you had to be vaccinated to do every single thing. And, and, and so it's been a challenge in 21 in so many areas areas on so many levels, it's been a challenge. But out of all of the challenges that we've had in 21, the worst thing that can happen in 22, the worst thing that can happen in 2022 is not COVID-19. The worst thing that can happen in 2022 is not a recession. The worst thing that could happen in 22 is not even death. Watch this. The worst thing that can happen is to go into a new year with the same old sins. 
the same old sins. If you go into the new year with the same old sins, then you will encounter the same old blockage. The same unanswered prayers. The same blessing blockers. If you go into with the old sins, to have the same distorted view about biblical principles. It's, it will be tragic if you go into a new year after all that you've gone through in 2021, all the things that you've experienced, the heartaches, the pains, the trials, the tribulations, the upsets, the downsets, all the things that you've experienced. It would be tragic to go into 22, coming out of 21 with the same biblical misconceptions, the same attitudes, the same addictions, the same worldly views, the same sinful ideas, agendas, and plans. Despite all that we've gone through, the most tragic would be, into, would be to go into the new with the same old you. It would be tragic, ladies and gentlemen. And here in our text, Paul puts pen to parchment and says, Because Christ died and was buried, and we too through baptism and was raised, we also can live a new life. Keep your Bibles open. We also can live a new life. Now here's the breakdown in the dissertation of Romans. Here's the breakdown, ladies and gentlemen. Romans chapter 1 through Romans chapter 3, the first half of Romans chapter 3. Paul argues the concept of condemnation. Chapter 1 through the first half of chapter 3, Paul argues about condemnation of sinners. Chapters 3, the second half, through 5, Paul shows us the justification of sinners. And here, Chapter 6 through 8, Paul shows us the sanctification of the sinners. Let, 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 let's, let's go over our lesson one more time. Let's go over one more time. Chapters 1 through 3 is condemnation. Chapters 3 through 5 is justification. And chapter 6 through 8 is sanctification. Let me see if I can simplify it to its least common denominator and preach it where you can reach it so that it can be beneficial to your lives. Um, chapters 1 through the first half of 3, he talks about condemnation of sinners. Condemnation, ladies and gentlemen, is what sends you to hell. Chapters... Three through five, he talks about the justification of the sinner. And justification is what keeps you out of hell. Chapters six through eight, he talks about sanctification of the sinner. And sanctification is what keeps you from the powers of sin and the powers of hell. Let me try it one more time because some of y'all still look sleepy. Condemnation sends you to hell. Justification keeps you out of hell. But sanctification keeps you from the powers of hell. All right, all right. All right. Now let's go from translation to application. If the blood of Jesus is not on your life, then my beloved, I need to tell you that you are in fact unequivocally without a doubt condemned to hell. I'm going to say it one more time just in case somebody ain't saved watching me. If Jesus is not the head of your life, if the Son of God, the Messiah, God that came in the human flesh, 
if Jesus, the blood of Jesus does not cover you and is not applied to your life, then I have some extremely bad news for you. And that is you are condemned to go to hell. I don't care what Oprah Winfrey tell you and other people tell you. There is no multiple way to get to God. There are no multiple roads to get to the Father. There is one way, and that one way is through the Son of God. Oprah and the rest of the world will tell you that you can get to God many different ways and many different gods. Nope, I need to tell you, you cannot. So if the blood of Jesus is not applied to your life, then you are on your way to hell and condemn. Now, if Christ is your Savior, then you have been declared justified. See the transition? You have been declared justified through faith in the blood. Not because of how holy you act. Mm -hmm. Not because of how holy you think you are. Not because of the holy rituals that you go through and the holy things that you do to say, hey, God, look at me. Am I doing pretty good? That's not why you justified. You justified. We're justified, ladies and gentlemen. We're justified because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're justified by grace and mercy of the blood that has been applied to our lives. Ladies and gentlemen. Here's what justification looks like. You still a sinner. The difference is God has declared you justified. God expunged your record even when you didn't deserve it. See what I'm saying? You still guilty of the crime. But for some strange reason, because God loves us so much, God says they're guilty, but I'm going to expunge it anyway. Now, if that doesn't deserve, I'm going to hit the shout button right there because God says you guilty. That's one thing if you ain't guilty. And you're like, well, you know what? I'm not guilty, so I got no guilty verdict. All right, we're cool. But when you guilty, you did the crime. But God says, I know they did the crime. Justification comes in the courtroom and says, Your Honor, I know they committed the crime. I got proof right here that they committed the crime. I'll show you right here's the video that they did the crime. However, we're pleading justification. And the judge says, because justification is your attorney. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Because justification is your attorney. I'm going to give you a clear record even though you don't deserve it. That gives, that deserves a glory right there because God has been good to you and, and to me. So it's been by the grace and the mercy of God that God overrides yourself and your sins. Now, those who say they're Christians I realize they don't have a beef with condemnation. I, I don't have a beef with condemnation. I, I'm a, I was a sinner, gave my life to Jesus. I don't have a problem with condemnation because now I'm not condemned, I'm justified. So I don't have a problem with just I don't have a problem with condemnation. I don't have a problem with justification either. Condemnation and justification, we ain't got no problems with that. But for some reason, when it comes to sanctification, everybody gets hung up. Because, watch this, sanctification is not about you going to hell. See, condemnation and justification is about you going to hell. Sanctification ain't about you going to hell. Sanctification is about how you live now on this earth. <laughs> see, uh, see, see what I'm saying? S see how see how y'all y'all see how y'all treat me right now? See. See, condemnation and justification, everybody's, if you die today, you're going to heaven. Yes, I'm going to heaven. Everybody Gucci with that. But sanctification is where the problem comes in. Because sanctification is what's applicable to how you do things in this life while you're still on this earth. Let me translate it for you. After you've been justified by the, by the blood, watch this. 
Are y'all listening to me? And like Chris Tucker said, can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Are y'all listening to me? Here it is. After you've been justified, there should be some behavior changes that occur that occurs because of sanctification. Did I make that clear? Do I need to speak it in another language or anything like that? After you have given your life to Christ and have been justified from your sins, now there should be some transitioning in your decorum, your demeanor, your attitude, your actions, your words, and your deeds, in your behavior. There should be something that's changing on a regular basis that changed because of the sanctification. So if you still stuck like Chuck, chillaxing in your favorite sins, then beloved, there's more than likely a problem in your sanctification. That's why, that's why you're trying to get baptized nine times. That's why you keep rededicating yourself to God. That's why you keep going back to God. Because there is a problem. There is a kink in the line between justification and sanctification. That's why you think you got to keep, keep going back to the pool. You got to keep taking communion on a regular basis and keep repeating the sinner's prayer because sanctification has not been, been applied in your life yet. You become, you become stuck in the twilight zone in justification. When God wants to make, wants you to make yourself available so that sanctification can become a part of your daily activity. You stuck in justification and God wants you to make yourself available for sanctification. But as long as you think you're good with justification, as long as you think that your sins don't stink, I know what y'all is thinking. As long as you don't think they stay, the process of sanctification becomes problematic. Church, I've discovered that some people, some people really don't want to change. I really have discovered that some people simply don't want to change. They may say they do. They may act as if they do. But some people don't want to change. They like their old, dirty self. Because the process of sanctification involves the Holy Spirit changing you into a brand new, better you. Sanctification means making you better. Making you think better and, and pray better and, and do better and, and talk better and, and sound better and perform better. To live better. To have changes in your disposition. Changes in your character and your conduct. So watch this. If you have a problem experiencing sanctification, then that's a pretty good sign that you might have a problem in your justification. Because Paul says, Paul says, how can the old you be dead to sin and the new you keep living in sin? It was unfathomable to Paul. It was perplexing because 
that which is dead is dead. Now the new will get up and be new. Like when we die, this body of ours, this temporary tent of ours is going to die. It's going to go in the ground and it's going to rot up. But the spirit goes to God. And in when he comes back, we get a new improved body that you can't describe. The old one stays old. The new becomes new, an incorruptible body. So that which is dead is dead, but that which is alive is, is, is alive and is changed. So Paul says, how in the world can you be dead to the sin? And living it at the same time. It doesn't make any sense is what Paul is saying. Paul says. He says. If that's the case. Then are you trying to tell me that Jesus need to die again and again. So that we can keep getting saved again and again. Paul says, if that's the case, if you have died in Christ and have been buried and raised in the baptism of Jesus Christ, you're dead to sin. But if the new you that has been transformed still lives in your favorite sins, how is that possible? So what Paul says, if that's the case, then you might need to go back and check to see if your I'm saved card is actually validated. Don't mean mug me. This was in the Bible before I was born. This was already in the Bible. I didn't put this in the Bible. It was already there. Paul is simply saying, if that's still the issue, if you still, I'm not talking about struggling with some sin. I ain't everybody struggles with some stuff. But he said, if you still cool, if you still, I, I'm still in the pursuit of sin. If that's the case, he says, then your I'm saved card that you got in your wallet, you need to go back and check the validation date because there's something invalid about your saved card. Let me ask you a question. Everybody get out of here. Let me ask you a question. Aren't you tired of the devil calling the shots in your life? Huh? I, I can't hear nobody in this virtual sanctuary. Aren't you tired of the devil calling the shots in your life? Setting you up to fail? Aren't you tired of him planting seeds that lead to destruction? Aren't you tired of Satan pointing and laughing at you when you mess up? Aren't you tired of him causing you to break things that should never have been broken and trying to fix things that should never be fixed? Aren't you tired of him causing you to think wrong and to talk wrong and to do wrong? Aren't you tired of the enemy always causing a problem in your life? Am I the only one that gets sick of the devil thinking that he's a shot ball, a, a shot caller and a baller in my life? Aren't you, ain't you tired? I know ain't anywhere Ain't you tired of letting the devil have his way? Let me help you out today. Because some of y'all think that the devil is your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all actually think that the devil like you. The devil ain't that bad, but he ain't, he ain't, he ain't done nothing to me. No? <laughs> Let me show you. Let me show you how Satan rolled. Let me show you how Satan rolled real quick. Y'all listen to me? I, I need your undivided attention right here. Let me, let, 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 me, let me show you how. Let me show you how the devil rolled. Watch this, beloved. Watch this. This is how the devil rolled. The devil will show up at your house, pull up in the extra stretch limousine, Get out the house, get out the car, walk up to the crib, knock on the door, sugar shot. With politeness, I'm here to take you out. Come on. Take my arm. And with extreme shivering, 
will walk you to the limo. And when you get inside this limousine, you will find inside this limousine is everything you can imagine. Everything you've ever wanted, everything you ever hoped, everything you ever dreamed is inside of this limousine. If you like women, they'll be in the limousine. If you like men, they will be in the limousine. If you happen to check the other box and like both, Lord have mercy, they will be in the limousine. I mean, whatever you want, man. Your favorite music, your favorite company, your favorite plans, your favorite sins, your favorite drink, your favorite smoke, your favorite snort, your favorite injections, whatever you can imagine is inside of this limousine. The devil came to take you out and we're going to party like it's 1999 is inside of this limousine. Like they say, turn down for wood. We're going we gonna to get it in tonight when I take you out on the town. The devil will even drive you past some family and some friends and let you listen to them say, slow down. Get out the limousine. But because of all the stuff that's going on in the limo, man, this is a night to remember. This is a party like no other party. Every euphoric feeling that you can ever have is inside of this limousine. Why am I getting out this limousine? Ain't nothing wrong with this. Everybody, do it. this feels good. It feels great. Are you kidding? Get out. Y'all should get in. Everything you want is inside this limousine, the devil is showing you an awesome time, an awesome experience. Until you happen to look up for a second and realize that the limo is going faster than usual. And there are some erratic movements starting to shake around inside of this limo. You start to sober up for just a second and you tap on the, the privacy glass. And when you look through the privacy glass, you realize that the devil is not in there. He done left the limo and didn't tell you. And while the car is driving out of control at a high rate of speed, you look up, there's a cliff. That's coming and nobody is driving that limo. And now you stuck in the limo of sin. And the devil is looking and laughing and pointing at you because all that time you thought he was giving you a good time. You thought he was showing you the best of the best. You thought he was your boy. You thought he was your girl. You thought he was your homie. And all this time he was actually picking you up just so he can kill you. Just so he can run you right off that cliff. That is, that's the nature of the enemy. He is not your friend. He is not your homeboy. He does not like you. He does not care about you. He wants to kill you any means necessary. Here's the good news, church. Paul says in the text that you don't have to get into the limo because Christ was buried and raised from the dead and we through baptism died and was raised also with him. Now we can live a brand new life. A life where sin no longer controls us and dictate our lives. A life where sin no longer easily beset us. In 2022, Paul says, we can live a new life where sin is no longer in control. Now, this is pertinent imperative, ladies and gentlemen, that you understand that the baptism that Paul is talking about is not just the physical expression of baptism, but the spiritual baptism that occurs in the heart. 
See, you got to understand that baptism in the physical is the outward expression to the world to let them know that I now belong to Jesus and I'm not ashamed to tell y'all or to show y'all. That's the physical expression. But Paul says it ain't just about the physical expression. I need there to be a, I need to be a baptism inside your heart by the Holy Spirit of God. Because if there's no real inward change, watch this, beloved, that all you do, all you'll be doing in your baptism is going to the pool, a dry sinner, and coming out of the pool, a wet sinner. That, that, that's the only thing you're doing. I'm going in dry, and I'm coming out wet, but I'm the same old me. But if you have truly been washed in the blood and the Holy Spirit has made new changes in you, then you can say like Paul said in Philippians 3 and 13, I don't have it all together, but here's what I can tell you. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm focusing on what's in front of me. Because I know that the heavenly gifts are far more important, far more valuable than the earthly gifts that I can ever get. Paul in Philippians says, I ain't got it all together, man. There's still some things that I need to get together myself. And I have not arrived in that location yet. But here's what I know. I'm not going to trip over yesterday. I'm not going to trip over what happened in 2021. I'm not going to trip over what happened in my life. What I do know is that from now on in 2022, I am going to focus on the things that are in the future and not the past. My beloved, that is the reason why your rearview mirror is so much smaller than your windshield. It's because your rearview mirror ain't supposed to be focused on. It's supposed to be glanced at. But your, 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 your front, your, your windshield is your future. That's where you put your focus. Paul says to us in this new season, in this new era, this new arena of life, that we can forget the things that are behind us and focus on the things that are in front of us. As I bid you farewell, may the Lord God bless you real good, but it's time now for you to, to tell the devil Tell Satan that the relationship is over. Tell him I'm, I'm breaking up with you, Mr. Devil. I'm, I've had enough. I'm tired, Mr. Devil. You, you done lied to me. You cheated on me. You even lied on me. The relationship is now over. Somebody type in the comments, it's over. Somebody type in the comments, it's over. As a matter of fact, it's not only over, Mr. Devil. Not only am I breaking up with you. Not only am I walking away from this, this relationship. Not only am I I'm cutting ties with you and your, and your manipulations. And not only am I cutting ties with you, but I am going to get a restraining order now on you, Mr. Devil. I'm going to get a restraining order that the blood of Jesus Christ will now be applied to my life in every way possible so that I can have a restraining order against the enemy. I'm not listening to you no more. I'm not doing what you want me to do anymore, Mr. Devil. Move over, bacon. Here comes some sizzling. Mr. Devil, I'm through in 22. I'm, wait, that rhyme. I don't think that was supposed to rhyme. That, that was good. I, I'm through with you in 22. It's time now to tell the devil that God has my undivided attention. Now my focus is on the creator and not the created. Now my focus is on what God will do for me or through me, not for me. Now my focus is what can God do in my life for kingdom building, not for personal building. Not for the stuff that I want and stuff I'm looking for. Now I want to know what does God want for me so that I can be everything that he created and commissioned me to be. I'm ready for a brand new me so that I can be all that he has purposed me to be. I'm not saying happy new year, ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying happy 
new me. Happy new me. And if you believe it, and the blood is applicable to your life, then why don't you type in the comments, happy new me. And give God the best praise that you woke up with this morning. Tell God, thank you, Jesus, for a brand new me. Thank you for another opportunity to give your name the praise and the glory. Thank you for a better me in a new year. Come on, give him praise. Come on, let's, I want to see those hearts. I want to see those hearts and those thumbs up all over. I want, I want to see them because God kept you another day. We offer Christ to you today in our virtual sanctuary. If you have not given the Lord Jesus Christ your, your heart, maybe you have given the preacher your hand, but you did not quite give the Lord your heart. You can please come now and give God your heart in this virtual live session. You can, you can text us. You can email us. You can write us. You can call us. You can message us. Right? You can DM us. What's up? Apple us. All that. Right? Well, we ain't got WhatsApp. That's my number. That anyway. But you can, uh, <laughs> but you can get a hold of us. We would love to have you as a member of the church. Hold the cross, Christian Baptist Church. Listen, you won't find a more real church than this one because we don't go through all of the preliminaries and fake stuff. We just want to preach and teach what this book right here say so that we actually can become a church without a spot or a wrinkle. So that God will actually say, you know what, Holy Cross, man, I'm going to use them as the model that I want to show everybody else how to be. So we would love to have you as a part of us at Holy Cross. Call us. Let us know. So we can hang out, so we can kick it together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Continue to hit your share buttons, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I see that we had a few more today than normal. That is a blessing. Thank you so much. We've increased in our likes and our follows. Amen. Uh, we're, we're moving on up. So listen, tell your family, tell your friends to come on and like us. If you have not already liked us in terms of you're following us, you can do that now and you will be added to our hookup. Uh, Mayor, if you can, can you put up there the text information again? We have, we're not using some of the things that we have, y'all. In 2022, we're going to have to amp it up. We're going to do it, too. We got to do it. All right, we got, we got text. You can text us. I am also looking at the new year coming up, all right, with our own app working on that, all right? But these things that I'm putting in, we got to use them, right? We got text, we got PayPal, what do we come with? We can hang with Givelify, y'all do use that. So we got some new, improved millennial stuff coming, and we've already had some millennial stuff, right? So let's use them, because that church app is coming in 22, all right? We're going to have our own app like the rest of the people. You're going to go on your phone, and you're gonna have, we're going to have an HC app where you do everything on the app, all right? I'm not just talking. Trust me. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> what is that? Nine, text nine four zero zero zero. There we go. I'm glad you put that up because I was going to say nine one. I'll jack that up. So nine four zero zero one. All right. This is also Sunday, so we're still in church even though we are at home. So we know that we have to uh, be diligent in our tithes and our offering. We know that we have the Give the Five pla platform. We have the mail-in. You can... Uh, mail it to the church. You can drop it off in the drop box. Um, and we have Givelify. We also have PayPal. But uh, So those things are available to you. Those of you that are on the Givelify platform. Um, I forgot to mention weeks and months ago, John, they changed the colors of it. I know some of y'all was like, oh, it's just, you know, no, it's the same Givelify. They just up there. They just changed their logo. So uh, please be diligent to God. We talked about giving last week in our Bible study, a little bit about that, things that can block your blessing. One of them is not properly giving to, to the ministry, as the Bible says. Um, but you know, at this church, we don't harp on money. I'm going to mention it because I'm supposed to, and the Bible tells me to, but I don't harp on it. I let people do what they do. You trust God, it will show in your 
in your giving. But God, we pray now for those that have come. I pray for the hearts and minds of the people that are coming uh, to give their lives to you, God, either in person or by virtual experience. And God, I pray for the for the, the giver that is giving their tithe and their offering, God, that they will be, be blessed above their expectations. Open the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they will have room to receive, God, not just in finances, but in health, in favor, in discernment, in healing, in restoration and wholeness, whatever they stand in need of. We thank you now in advance that you are supplying that for them as they are faithful to you. According to your faith, the Bible says, we have done unto you. So I speak a blessing over them now that as they give to you, they will be blessed in their spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy that we made it again. Now we are getting ready for our communion so that we can get out of your way. I try not to keep videos too long. So go ahead and grab your your um, crackers. I have a piece of a pretzel uh, and I do have some actual white grape juice. I, I, I know it's not a red cup, but I know this cup too looks suspicious, but this is just white grape juice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right, this, <laughs> this ain't the other stuff, all right? So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you a few seconds to grab that. While you are grabbing that, speak to yourself and just say, God, I thank you once again. And God, I'm trusting you that even in the midst of trials and tribulations and dilemmas, I'm still trusting you to take me to places that I've never been. In Jesus' name, we thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I trust that you have that with you. I am... Trying to find something real quick, so I'll give you a couple more seconds to grab that. Right. All right, and that's what I give. I have too much stuff over here. All right. Give me one second. I almost had it. seriously all right so we want to make sure let me turn this down right now because you know our facebook be tripping he prayed over the bread and broke the bread god we ask now that you would change this from the carnal use to the spiritual use as we pray over this bread and the juice that we use god that that you would sanctify us purify us and make us whole again in jesus name we pray amen after jesus gave thanks he broke it and gave it to them and said this is my body do this in remembrance of me. He gave it to them and they ate. Then he passed the cup and said, this is my blood. Drink. And they did drink. The Bible says they went out and sang a hymn. I want you to understand 
that community is very important. I know we kind of kind of rushed through it because of because of the time, what have you. But it's a very serious, uh, very serious ordeal because he died on the cross for our sins and, and was raised again for our sins. I'm not going to explain it right now, but it's, it's, it's incredible what he went through just for you and I. So when we take communion, we want to make, th- make sure that we are sincere in our hearts and our minds when we do it. Amen. All right. We're exiting the sanctuary. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in with us. Like us, love us, share us. I will see you Wednesday night at 715 Warfare Wednesday. Next Sunday is second Sunday. So we are back on the, the same schedule, which will be at home, which is our normal at home um, session. And so we will make sure that we will tune in together as well. Third Sunday. Well, I'll mention that second Sunday. Third Sunday, we'll be back in sanctuary. All right. So stay safe. Once again, happy new year and happy new you. And let God do what he do inside of you. Amen. All right. Love you. I will see you soon. God bless you. Let's exit the sanctuary with some Joshua Rogers, the blood. Now it's more.